we are starting our fine art section. Uh, please welcome. Sorry, I just need to check if the Teams is switched on. Ah. Okay, it's switched on, yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry for that. <laughs> so uh, let's welcome the Siteja Gumilar and his article. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good day. Uh, my name is Tejo Gumilar from the uh, Department of Industrial Design at the Faculty of Design, this university, uh, Bitgos University of uh, Techno Science and Technology. And uh, today uh, I would like to present uh, one of my projects, which is still going on, uh, exploring new quality and aesthetics of wet type a bathroom in Southeast Asia using bamboo fibers. The geographic profile of countries in Southeast Asia, uh, accompanied by the monsoon climate, resulted to Southeast Asian people's unique way of bathing and washing in the so-called the wet bathroom. The abundant uh, source of flowing water and water wells also <coughs> lessens the need to have a water distribution, distribution system with water tank towers in rural areas and the large number of population in urban areas hamper the quality of centralized pipe water system, forcing urban communities to organize their own privately water infrastructure. As the result, most of houses receive water with low pressure led directly to bathroom and kitchen where a big <coughs> bathtub is uh, put in the uh, center of the bathroom, reserving adequate water uh, enough for the whole family members for the day. Uh, so if you travel to Southeast Asia, you will be surprised with different kind of bathrooms. Uh, we have conventional ingenious wet bathrooms. It is the easiest to provide and uh, European uh, style bathroom which requires high pressure water supply. Uh, it means higher cost of provisions. <coughs> Um, in general, this how it looks like the wet bathrooms. Inside, there is a big uh, water uh, tank or water tub, uh, and uh, a person is taking bath by pouring their body one uh, scoop and another, and <clears throat> the uh, toilet, as you may see, is either sitting or squatting. Uh, the pros of this uh, kind of bathroom is it is economical. It uses less water and it is multi-purpose. You can do a lot of uh, uh, washing activities uh, in this bathroom, but the contrast, it has high humidity, it is uh, very prone to fungus and has a poor level of hygiene. It is wet, always wet. Of course, there are also better looking uh, wet bathrooms, uh, like uh, it is shown, <coughs> they are shown in these pictures. But uh, most of them, uh, they are in uh, such situation that it is humid, it is a little bit dirty uh, and sleazy, and uh, also a lot of people are using uh, the bathtub made of uh, cheap PVC plastics, which uh, breaks easily, and. Uh, it may create an environmental problem. How big the problem is, is as big as the population of the countries. As you may see here, <coughs> uh, the biggest country in this area is Indonesia. Uh, there are 279 million people. Uh, you can imagine in the middle there is a with over 100 million of people. <coughs> yeah, and also you can see Philippines, over 100 million, Vietnam, Thailand, there are also uh, a lot of population. It means this huge population, also huge market, but also huge potential ecological damage due to plastic waste, deforestation, <coughs> as well as energy consumption. So the problems in this conventional wet bathroom is the poor hygiene, low quality of water tap, uh, made of uh, polyvinyl chloride, 
<coughs> and fiberglass, which the combination is not easy to um, recycle. It is impossible to recycle. And also the questionable aesthetic value. Uh, our aim of this research is to lower the use of PVC fiberglass compound uh, using a recyclable and also sustainable material uh, to increase the use of these materials, which also empower the local economy to enhance aesthetic values with better hygiene, functionality, and design. Um, the method is used here, uh, uh, participant observation and focus group. This project I do together with my uh, partner researcher, Dr. Intan Pramaswari from the Institute of Technology in Bandung in Indonesia. We do experiments uh, on design solutions and production techniques. Uh, the material that we propose here is bamboo because it is one of the fastest growing tree in the world. It is actually grass but uh, you can harvest it in five or seven years uh, compared to uh, wooden uh, material which needs uh, 20 years. Um, uh, bamboo can be harvested, harvested without replanting. So bamboo in traditional design often appears in classic and rustic styles, which doesn't always fit to the modern uh, fashions. And some architect and designer develop modern design approaches as well as modern production technology, which enables the creation of processed bamboo products such as bent bamboo furniture and flooring panels, which the annual um, trade value uh, in 2017 estimated about 60 billion US dollar. <clears throat> so it's a big business. Here are some examples of rustic traditional classical uh, furniture. Uh, some are used to create atmosphere, but this is not the uh, direction that we are going to. Uh, we would like to create more to design, uh, modern design approaches. Uh, <clears throat> so our design ob objectives is to develop bathroom elements with modern technology and aesthetic approaches, such as fabricated single or modular panels made of processed bamboo, which fit most of typical bathrooms and comply with a uh, national industrial standard with the emphasis of better hygiene and functionality. This is actually the key factor, the hygiene. It makes uh, <clears throat> the aesthetics uh, much, much better. Uh, it, uh, the application can be as wall panels, water tub, water scoop, sink, self setting door, grips and handles. And we uh, try to use the technology such as uh, plywood band processing with uh, phenolic resin glue. And we try to use as low as possible the formaldehyde uh, content, <coughs> which is actually uh, toxic in some level. Uh, milling uh, process with computer aided manufacture, such as CNC or laser cutting. And bamboo structure provide us several options of uh, finishing uh, patterns. Um, it doesn't need any coloring because to give colors, uh, you just need to boil it a little bit longer so it will be carbonized either darker or uh, brighter. Uh, we are still working on some uh, several construction tests. Uh, the design of uh, those panels, the wall, the <clears throat> uh, cabins uh, are easy to make and we have several uh, design on it but our goal, the challenge is to have the big water tank which can hold up to 60, 100 or 150 kilograms for the whole family fully on the wall and uh, <clears throat> therefore we will have a free uh, floor uh, free of other unnecessary stuffs, which makes uh, the place uh, easier to clean, easier to dry with better ventilation, and we have uh, more space to use. These are uh, some samples that uh, what we do. Uh, we will be working on the models, and uh, uh, we also apply uh, steel constructions uh, inside to have it uh, to have the construction strong enough to hold that weight. So the key of our uh, 
proposed design is to have this uh, water tub uh, mounted on the wall to have uh, a cleaner, more spacious uh, place, which enable us to have better uh, design arrangement and aesthetic um, finishing. So, <clears throat> uh, because it is very short, uh, my conclusion is that bamboo panels for wet bathroom would replace or reduce the use of PCV uh, and fiberglass, which con the combination made uh, this material difficult to recycle. It shall provide end user and ecological alternatives with better aesthetic concepts supported with general guidelines. Uh, the standard, as I also <clears throat> mentioned, of application into several bathroom interior settings that people can arrange uh, to uh, their own desire. The production of bamboo panels for bathroom will also empower small and medium enterprises. Uh, therefore, it propels the local and uh, sustainable economies. There is not yet any national industrial standard issued for bathroom equipment made of wood and bamboo. And this project, at least in, in Indonesia, and this project can be a useful case study in order to analyze the criterion of technical requirements of such products. Thank you very much. I welcome questions if you have. Thank you very much. Uh, did anyone have some questions? No. So thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you. you very much. And now, uh, sorry. And now we will listen to Engine Gune. Yeah, <laughs> please welcome. Thanks, Katarzyna. Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce myself. My name is Engin Güney. Uh, I'm uh, on Oxford University Fine Arts Faculty, uh, Painting Department. And uh, the subject of my work is uh, new artistic orients shaped by technological developments. With this title, I will touch on the issue of uh, post-digital culture and relationship of art and post-digital culture. And I will conclude my presentation with consolation and discussion. Post-digital culture, digital technologies are not just communication tools that connect individuals and organizations around the world. They have a structure that has cultural dimensions and even incorporated cultural process into its environment. The cultural change process that takes place with digitalization includes a structure that cannot be compared with previous cultural process. Before the digital culture, there was no instant interactive communication with the desi desired persons everywhere in the world. There were no multidisciplinary study areas with the digital content such as artificial intelligence. Remote control system and autonomous system couldn't be developed. A different cultural transformations take place with state system, computer and mobile technology. In recent years, there has been a transhumanism movement off the road which argues that technology and science should be used in order to increase the physical and cognitive abilities of people and to eliminate undesirable aspects such as hanging and getting sick. It's also not worthy that ro uh, robots with artificial in intelligence, smart assistants, and other ad advanced technologies have gone far beyond the tools and methods defined at the beginning of the digital age. With the mapping of the human genome, it's possible to witness that the artificial organs produced Today works solidly in the body. 
Therefore, a new qualification was needed to describe the development in question and the concept of post come to do, therefore. Although the prefix post means after, the concept of post-digital is used in the sense of continuation, uh, continuation and beyond, not after the digital age. Post-digital age, it can be defined as the period in which we no longer define the word digital as a brand new technology and something spread and where digital, virtual and real life intervene. Here people do not question digital transformation as in the first times when digital entered our lives. Kids get involved with technology. Parents who were worried about the, their children in the first stage are no longer worried. They embarrass the digital world and don't compare with the past. According to Farhat, virtual reality content prepared in the digital media will be so realistic that people question real life more in near future. The perception of reality, time and space will become much more complex. In this age, the lines between virtual uh, experience and experience in physical life are disappearing. Research on increasing human physical and cognitive abilities are increasing. Artificial in uh, intelligence technologies are developing. Undesirable aspects such as hugging and getting sick are tired to be eliminated and equipment, virtual, mixed reality surrounded us. Word digital, uh, word digital is not defined as a brand, new technology, and as something spread, a different orientation is seen in art projects from digital art. Relationship of art and post-digital culture. In digital artworks, it was tired to make pictures by robots or artificial intelligence to create software programs. Now, there is a tendency towards manipulation with consensus intervention in studies conclude with a post-digital understanding. The tendency towards flawed, flawed studies for the humanizing of technology is used in art after uh, digitalization. Marzek states that post-digital art shows us the humanitary character of computers and introduce us mission, word, fails, ace, and die. Digital art based on algorithmic calculation and is error-free. On the other hand, post-digital art has evolved into application that malfunctions or mistakes by using glitches and achieving unpredictable outputs. In such studies, extraordinary uh, results are achieved by making changes in the pixel sort, uh, shorting algorithm of image files writing image as if they are sound and handing them in usual ways. Besides, the logic in the art of glitch is to produce by breaking the codes. The glitch can be used for different purposes. I then designed this work to show a critical approach to the disappearance of the boundaries between the virtual and real. In this project, a virtual hologram fish was projected next to the fish in the pyramidal aquarium. Necessary, uh, necessary adjustments have been made to make this fish look like real. Disruption in one of the two swimming fish that appear in the aquarium while watching cho uh, choice consensus stimulation. The project was created by my graduate students. The village is alternative methods to stimulate consensus.
Vax project is one of the post-digital art projects that should be shown as an example. Vax explores the centers of real and digital space, thought, projection, mapping, and moving surface. The short film documents a live performance captured entirely in camera, but and Dolly company product this work to serve as both an artistic statement and technical demonstration. It is the culmination of multiple technology, include large-scale robotic projection mapping and software engineering. Post-digital art, integrity is the foreground. Artistic works such as video art, installation, robotic art, net art, equipment reality, animation, performance are intertwined. Applications such as projection, mapping, and uh, three-dimension computer generated are used together. Since it usually requires a multidisciplinary approach, projects are cr uh, created with the teamwork of different field experts. The box projects, which you watched in five minutes, was completed in six months with the team you see below. Box film credits. Box behind the signs. Artistic creates performance with equipment reality and virtual reality applications in the post-digital age where the disappeared lines between virtual and real expressions. Anna Ziliava performance live in front of the audience use, using virtual reality technologies. Artist creates a mixed reality video for each post-digital art project. This tec uh, technique uh, uh, allows a person with, without a virtual reality handset to watch their paint in a virtual world. Then videos are shared on social networks, constantly improving her te uh, technique and pushing the limits of virtual reality. Anna's impressive artworks resemble real old paintings in any respect. She works as traditional and digital artist, ad adapting her skills to this new medium. Consultations and discussion. Such given explains which reveal the relationship between art and the cultural structure show parallelism between cultural and art will continue in the future. The ongoing changes from the past show how to the near future will be shaped. With this view, my estimation for the future is as follows. Perception of reality, time, and space will be intertwined. Technology will be much more advanced and with us spirit. 
as computer and software technology developed virtual reality experiences and corporate applications in virtual media will increase. While science tires to make the virtual as real as possible, hegemony will continue to corrupt the real. Human will adopt the instruction of silicon and steel into his body and will adopt a hybrid structure. Efforts will be made to create a superior human generation. Efforts such as can intervention will be shaped by ideological consideration. While science humanizing its mission, hegemony will continue to detect the standard is a hum human. Art will continue to parallel with technological developments and cultural change and uh, hegemonic influence. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. It was so awesome that I don't have words, but it's okay because Magda shows me that we don't have uh, time. So <laughs> if it's okay for you, we will talk about it uh, on the coffee break. Um, it was very interesting. Thank you so much. Thanks. And now please welcome um, Ekran Likos. Dear colleagues, it's Erkan Nikos from Nightin May University in Turkey. So any of us doesn't have any relationship with the wood, actually. We all need woods, and we have relationship with the woods from childhood to death. So the furniture, the foods, see, woods, since it is important role in the climate, important role in the sustainability. So especially the recent century brought the growth in technology advance uh, we couldn't estimate before. But right now we face its results. So however, responsible consumption for sustainable purposes can change society little by little. And especially last decades, this consumption or this uh, the bad impact to nature uh, show us dramatically. So here the designer has the impact role to change uh, actually our lifestyle and living environment. Uh, it has also accelerated the consumption to red, uh, resources and caused great damage towards ecological the balance. Uh, so last uh, research show us uh, we declined the world's uh, world uh, the forest area, even if uh, it is the small range ratio, but. Uh, Still get uh, the wood to as a uh, industrial purpose. It takes maybe 50 years, maybe the hundred of years. We need to get a good uh, the oak or uh, the walnut or what else? Uh, some iroko. Is we we do need lots of time to get uh, this uh, the forest area. But uh, since we lose our uh, sources then we will face the more uh, the dangerous things. So that's why the material usage has become the most important part of the human life. So various alternative materials found a significant impact on the environment and the nature. For instance, the plastics. So we often use it, but uh, some plastic might be a quite uh, hazard, hazardous uh, and it really impact the nature. But some plastic were able to use it. Uh, some plastic, for instance, if you use it with the food, then it will uh, affect our health. But some products, I mean, that will be the fine to use it. So especially the environmental factor should be taken into account of the earliest possible stage of product development and design. Actually, if it doesn't uh, 
design or think about only the service life of uh, the furniture, or part of furniture. Also, we have to think about its uh, the after service life. So, for instance, we use uh, the furniture or chair that uh, you sit here. Uh, what we have to do after uh, finishing its service life, or what we can do after uh, it's broken. So, can we replace it, or we have to just throw it away? So, we don't have to do this. So, the designer should also think about its material and especially after use it. Some way we have to uh, recycle it or we might uh, reuse in a different uh, the purposes. So the designer, especially at the basic level, we have to think about that. So for these goals, improving product uh, life cert life circle, including recyclability or reusability, maintaining or increasing product quality, and reducing the quantity of toxicity of the waste generated during manufacturing can all be at least partly realized through the careful selection of raw materials. For instance, a polyacrylic polyacrylic hydrocarbon. So those are uh, polymers are used to make it the plastic soft. But these effects, even this cause the cancer. So for this case, uh, some the certificate, uh, the furniture, the products uh, able to get uh, this certificate before sale, before market. It means it is. Uh, it doesn't affect uh, the human life. Uh, we have to think about it. So uh, then we have to use those kind of plastic uh, that doesn't uh, harm the human, especially if we keep connect. If we touch them, then it uh, increase the risky. Uh, for this case, the circular economy and sustainable furniture uh, on its circle life, its duration of subsequent management of its waste. Uh, that is what different it is, the uh, sustainable furniture from conventional. This circle economy is based on the use of resources. Uh, a system that attempts to reduce the both of use of raw material and gener generation of waste. The idea is to reuse and recycle, always adding value. So right now we just uh, think about uh, recycle and reuse the products or the, uh, the materials. Uh, so kind of the furniture companies might use recycled materials that is not only created from uh, post-consumer waste, but also be able to someday be recycled again in the manufacturing process by using recycled plastic, woods, or the metals. So somehow, for instance, the, the used wood, then uh, we have, uh, there is a, uh, some kind of uh, the enterprise to use it uh, to make chips or fibers. Then later on, in a different purposes, we make particle board or particle board or uh, MDF or some the other uh, small uh, the, the parts of wood and we glue it and make it a big like a table or plate and uh, we're able to use it as a solid wood. Uh, so that's the important point to, to use uh, solid wood. So making recyclable. For instance, uh, the, our house, uh, the company Flores Cafe, coffee table, those are uh, actually the copper, the material. So in the furniture, we don't have to use the only woods. We're able to use plastics, metals, and the other materials. So this company just uh, the uses copper from the used or uh, some the, the copper uh, that includes some other materials, the products. It will help uh, 
to use us to need uh, the natural resources. So, by the way, it will bring it separate to the other materials, and then later on, they demold it, uh, and then they put, uh, they give it the new life. So, by the way, it will help to reduce consumption of the uh, resources. Kind of the IKEA also try to use some of the organic materials to uh, to reduce the water consumption or uh, some other the plastic materials. So otherwise, the other uh, option is the reused. It's simply using a product for a purpose other than its original uh, function. So. We just got it uh, after service life. We giving the new uh, the modification, new life of use. We able to get this uh, the materials from old furniture, even the, some structural spores, or demolished homes, or some other, even from uh, the river or from the sea that wash up the, on the shore. So this the uh, different variety of. Uh, getting materials. Uh, with this kind of uh, facilities has some advantages by reducing uh, the devastating impact of deforestation, keeping natural resources, including much lower emission than associated with the logging or transport, transport processing of new wood, and save materials from going to waste. So, this is kind of uh, the table connected with the metals. So those all the metals uh, get from the used furniture. And you're able to see on the right side, uh, you have to collect them and then uh, they use it in the right uh, purpose, in the right project. Uh, so, but to make these uh, habits, let's say, uh, especially the big furniture companies like IKEA, like uh, let's say the Turkish some companies, so like uh, let's say uh, Kelebek or let's say uh, Bellona or some other uh, companies. So they have, for instance, IKEA has over 9,000 uh, products. So if they use, if they use some uh, the recycled products or reused uh, the materials, it will help to reduce uh, the wood consumption. So it will uh, result to use, uh, to reduce deforestate, deforestation. So this, I mean, if the big companies make this, it will encourage other small companies to, uh, to continue their path. For this, especially not only companies, but uh, for us, for consumers, we have to change our uh, impact on the planet by changing our lifestyle or habits. So, for instance, to buying some uh, the goods, we have to select, we have to ask kind of products that use to recycle or uh, the reuse uh, production. Uh, one of these is the consumer responsibility and the consider that waste doesn't exist, but all the material can be transformed into something useful again following a circular ecological system. Well, thank you for attention. If you have any question, then I will be answered. No one? Uh, thank you that you are speaking about such a big problem uh, of our civilization. And uh, I think that the next um, presentation is some kind of... Um, Kind of uh, eco culture and yeah. <laughs> so let's listen. Thank you. Yep. So wait a second. So. I will help you. Yeah. It's not this. Mm -hmm. No, this one. Yeah. This one? Okay. So. 
So this uh, topics is ecoculture and art and new aesthetic imagination and process management for sustainability. So supposed to be Metineker uh, present this one, but since he couldn't come, then I have to present here instead of him. So ecoculture and art relationship. And the new world is transforming the concepts it inherited uh, from the past. Culture, especially and primarily, brings the new ecologies of this transformation to the life. Uh, culture with the new concept coming to the left, like eco-culture, like digital culture, or uh, let's say the techno-culture. It reveals its ecological destruction, especially the digital culture and uh, that techno-culture is able to say this kind of destruction. Art as a cultural production mechanism is rethinking and practicing its relationship with the culture and the new aesthetic contents. The most radical approach to environmental problems starts from the deep ecology movement developed by philosopher Arnaz. All other approach to the environment are anthropocentric. It says people have clearly higher value than other, any other entity. So, eco-culture refers to the cause of cultural and human changing. Therefore, in a parallel with this change, eco-culture is perceived as a content that expresses the change of nature in some way. They feel they have a right to change it. The most general expression of culture is a field of interaction. The actors of the interaction are various. It will change according to the actors. So all kind of uh, process such as human and human with himself. Human and machine, there is not man, the human, so sorry for the mistyping. And uh, human with nature interaction. We're able to call this all ecological process. So, this, uh, the culture developed new technology beyond to itself. So here, ecoculture is not on the subject within the new cultural ecologies and the habitats to be considered. Ecoculture at the same time is the problem area of a habitat that has to be located in new cultural ecologies. The role of art begins to attract attention here. Art has undertaken new mission as a field of practice of various manipulation in positioning, defining, and directing new cultural ecologies to consumption. So let's start with ecoculture versus technoculture. As we mentioned about uh, on the left side, the culture has some the new uh, naming. So after the industrial revolution, the whole world added she machinery and technology to its relation with nature. After the two world war, uh, globalization got rigid with the dominance of technology culture. The transition of the relation of post-industrial relation of production of industrial society to information society was seen as closely related to the world's globalization. With this globalization, the social and collective identities have been dispersed. So cultural codes were erased and new global cultural codes, sub-identities, super-identities, and uh, hybrid, hybridization concepts came to the fore. Nowadays, transition from technology culture to technoculture is about completed due to hybridization. While technology culture defines more instrumental and functional production process, technoculture is seen to be mostly related to the expansion of consumption process. Uh, one of the duties of technoculture is to meet the realistic needs of the real people where they live and when, when they need it. Technocultural universe feeds consumption motivation and addictions that are centered on the needs. The focus is here, person or personality. The conflict between ecoculture and technoculture is actually a cultural conflict. It is the struggle of culture. Ecoculture tries to remind its value with the humanity and preferential scope 
and people start to mind about it again. Technoculture is a commitment that appeals to people and has direct impact, and then it dominates itself with addiction. Here, artistic and aesthetic motivation attract attention and gain a key position for sustainability. Culture is now characterized, characterized by the, its new ecologies. New cultural ecologies trivialize culture, make the concepts that come with the culture is more important. In this respect, transition from technology culture to technoculture has been rapid and faced with the cultural potential and the problems of ecoculture and ecology. So this struggle between two formations occurs with content that can affect people's view and focus. In this respect, art and aesthetics needs updating by being as associated with the ecocultural context. Uh, the conflict between technoculture and ecoculture is a natural outcome. So ecocultural awareness can become worthless under technocultural domination. Social uh, sociology of culture and ecoculture should be linked and work together to get rid of uh, this technocultural domination. The influence of art should be made more natural for awareness and orientation. <laughs> that will be fast. <laughs> Any you. question? Thank you very much. Did anyone have some questions? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now um, I want to invite Yulia Vlaklins. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to present to you uh, my, the, the result of my doctoral uh, project uh, that is titled The New Sustainable Tourist Model for the Elbon Canal, uh, because my research is about uh, the uh, canals. Uh, first, uh, a short characteristic of the, um, of the canal itself. Uh, it is uh, one of the la longest uh, canals in Europe, uh, and it is uh, approximately uh, 150 kilometers long. Uh, it uh, consists of uh, lakes and uh, canals, so this is like a, a whole uh, system of, of water. Uh, it was opened in the mid uh, 19th century uh, and uh, very uh, in the very early stage of its uh, work it uh, started to be used for tourist purposes uh, in the second decade of the 20th century uh, it is uh, unique in european but also in the world scale because it has uh, the only preserved inclined planes uh, which I will uh, tell about later. Uh, it's actually uh, not very well known in Poland, uh, mainly locally. Uh, the, the whole region of the canal is rich with uh, natural uh, and uh, wonders and uh, cultural heritage. Uh, and uh, it's in a region of Poland that has been neglected for many years. Uh, and uh, due to that, it lacks uh, of interest in infrastructure and uh, mooring places to just uh, take off uh, to the land. Mm, uh, my doctoral project consisted of uh, uh, different approaches. Uh, the, the thesis of the project was how to make tourists going along the canal uh, want to actually stop and venture inland uh, to take advantage of the local and cult uh, cultural and natural offer. Uh, I did some field research, uh, a lot of bibliographic studies, uh, I did some comparative studies uh, um, with uh, existing um, tourist models on other canals in Europe and uh, around the world, and I also gained and exchanged knowledge during various canal conferences. Uh, 
uh, I, the, the result from my research was the introduction of tourist infrastructures that would be tailored to the needs uh, of uh, tourists and uh, to the environment, uh, just to interfere with the nature as little as possible. Um, the, uh, the new tourist model uh, included designing a completely new means of transport that would be comp sustainable uh, and would be adapted to the uh, specificity of the canal and uh, to the needs of, of its future users. Uh, and uh, those, those, those uh, target uh, users would be new type of tourists who would like to come and spend time on the canal itself uh, and who would like to just stop and uh, further venture inland, not only go through the canal. Uh, first, a short analysis of the state of the canal uh, and the current uh, tourist model that we have. Uh, as I said, it's a unique canal. Uh, it still has uh, inclined planes, uh, this, this, this is a system of, uh, of, of kind of a lift uh, that was uh, used to overcome about 100 meters of land elevation uh, over a 10 kilometer span. Uh, this is a system of uh, carts going uh, using counterbalance, they, they go on, uh, on tracks and they just uh, carry the the vessels, the ships, and, and, and the boats uh, on land to, to the other section of the canal that is uh, just uh, located higher. Um, uh, this is the last existing example of uh, the original uh, technological uh, wonder because uh, all others were dismantled by the 1930s. Uh, this is the view of the canal as it used to work in uh, about 100 years ago. Uh, this is a ship on the, on the incline plane. So the current state of the canal, uh, we can say that it works. It has undergone some uh, cosmetic um, changes during the um, revitalization uh, in years 2011 to 2014. Uh, Unfortunately, after the renovations, there are frequent inclined planes failures and other uh, sections of the canals. Um, there are, as, as you can see on the picture, uh, there are um, going uh, some larger ships in scale of, of, of the canal uh, that are from 1960s and 1970s, so they are very outdated. Uh, and uh, not all sections of the canals can be used because of the um, of the shallow sh shallowing of the uh, of those uh, sections. Uh, here is is a map that that, that shows uh, where the canal lies. It's in the north of Poland, uh, and the the region is rich with uh, different uh, terrain structures and. And it's very and very picturesque landscapes, mm. and the the, the, the the current tourist model itself it contains mostly of large ships, uh, such as you see in the in the uh, picture. They are not large uh, as as we can see them, but they are large in the scale of the canal, which is only seven meters uh, 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 wide. Uh, you can also see yachts and kayaks on the on the water. Uh, the the ships are usually crowded, as you can see in the picture, uh, and they only move on the limited routes. Mm. The ships, uh, because they are very old, they they just produce a lot of noise and fumes, uh, and unfortunately, they produce uh, quite huge. Uh, waves that destroy the wharves. Uh, the tourism that we can say is, 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 a mass, is kind of a mass tourism uh, is very superficial and it does not contribute to the economic growth of the region uh, at all. Uh, first uh, element that I uh, would like to show you is the assumptions for the new tourist model uh, that would be sustainable. Uh, it uh, assumes the preservation of the renaturalized nature, 
because uh, the canal, for, for many years of neglect, the canal has overgrown. So now uh, it is in some way renaturalized. There is a lot of uh, indigenous but also new uh, species of plants and animals. Uh, the canal should serve not only people but also other organism, uh, organisms um, which are actually uh, an equal element of the reservoir and its landscape. Uh, design activities that, that, that should be held in this, um, in this canal should be strictly uh, thought out and adapted to the natural conditions and uh, the, the program assumes uh, tra transforming the canal from just a transit route to an attraction itself, just to spend the time on the canal uh, and commune with nature and culture. Uh, the program should assume that uh, the, uh, the tourist model is uh, individual transport uh, or in small groups rather than this uh, mass transport. Uh, it should adjust the offer of tourist attractions to individual preferences. Mm, it should uh, optimize the number of tourists on uh, individual sections of the canal because now in, in the area of the inclined plains there is just uh, uh, the, the greatest crown and in, in the other parts there are actually no people. Uh, and it should introduce some stopping places to, uh, to that, that would become starting points for, for this further venture in land for, for, the, for this uh, new adventures on land. Uh, here is some uh, examples of uh, designed uh, bike and uh, uh, walking routes for tourists that uh, go through um, areas with some cultural and natural uh, attractions. And they um, just uh, start in, in a in in one of those stopping places and you can go uh, round in a circle to, to, the, to back to the stopping place and you can just go back to the, uh, to the boat and continue your uh, trip along the canal. Uh, first element of the um, tourist model is uh, design of uh, a watercraft. So there is a design study. As I said, the width of the canal is about seven meters and the fairway is up to seven meters. So it's, it's rather narrow. Uh, the condition of the canal is uh, very often, as you see on the picture, is overgrown with uh, water plants. Um, you, the, the, some, some of the sections are sealed up and uh, they cannot be uh, frequented by tourists because of that. And uh, it's difficult to, to, to go along the canal on a motorized vessel because of the uh, power screws that catch a lot of those plants. Um, for my um, watercraft, I chose the, um, um, the, uh, as a motor uh, uh, paddle wheel that would be electrically driven. Uh, I used a um, Polish patent from 1933 uh, to, um, uh, to um, Im implement it in, uh, in this uh, boat. Um, the boat should be also uh, adjusted to the limitations of the Elblon Canal, to the uh, size of the carts uh, on inclined planes and so on. Uh, I decided that it would be made of laminate uh, so that it could be produced in local shipyards uh, because there are plenty of uh, local shipyards that produce boats from laminate actually. Uh, laminate is now um, possible to be recycled uh, so, so it's quite sustainable now, um, and I will just skip the rest. Uh, it's, it should be up to eight people, and it should allow uh, taking bikes on, on, on board. Uh, the, this is the example of uh, several um, versions of, of, of the boat, from, from the simple one that would carry only people for like a three hours trip, in example, to, to our longer trips with, uh, in example, children. You can take bicycles because uh, the boat can be adjusted to the needs of, of the passengers. You can even uh, sleep on the boat because there is option for a tent. 
and, and for, for a roofing, uh, the dimension, general di dimension of the boat is always the same, but you can change the elements uh, to, to just transform it. So here is how, how it looks, that you have the, the base of the boat is the same, and the rest of the elements you can just uh, use as you like. Uh, the boat should be rather small, uh, should not dominate the landscape uh, and the canal, and should, it shouldn't overwhelm uh, the, the canal. And the other element of the um, tourist pro model is uh, to design a micro marinas or, or micro harbors, as you call it. Uh, they, they are located along the canal in, in some... Uh, in, in, in a place that I chose, uh, that, that would be the best for, for stopping and just venturing from there further inland. Uh, it sh they should provide resting place, access to sanitary units such as toilets and shower. Uh, so they should provide camping space and uh, charging batteries for the boats and garbage disposal, everything that the camping should uh, provide. Um, here how it looks. Uh, I chose uh, for this uh, project to use, uh, reuse old um, uh, shipping containers uh, that will be uh, covered uh, on the front with uh, polished uh, mirrored uh, steel and uh, also with uh, wood and local wood like pine wood and, and they, they would have a green roof and um, they should be located with the steel uh, facade uh, towards the water so that they are just uh, hidden in the landscape. Uh, they should not be just so that visible. Uh, they are uh, a little, uh, they, they act as a dissonance between the form uh, of the unit and, and, and land objects. Um, but it's, it's deliberate action because they, they should be merged to the landscape by uh, being uh, hidden into it with the uh, mirrored walls. Um, they they uh, concentrate on upcycling because I use those, as I mentioned, those shipping containers. Um, and now conclusions, uh, the, the proposed design solutions that consist tourist and sanitation infrastructure, a new type of watercraft adapted to the specificities uh, and the scale of the canal and uh, designation of those uh, mooring or as you call it, uh, stopping places and uh, those bike and pedestrian trails uh, that start from those uh, points. Uh, they just constitute a set of guidelines. Actually, this is not a, a finished project, it's just a set of guidelines uh, suggesting the direction of development of the micro harbor project, uh, excursion routes and, and a network of vessels, uh, and it, would, it should take into account the influence of the broadly understood landscape. Uh, restraint actions will prevent a degradation of the canal landscape and its nature, the use of the canal in its current condition without drastic uh, clearing or, and dredging and uh, gradual complete elimination of those existing uh, cruise ships and no need of that, that that would lead to no need of reinforcing the quays with concrete and less risk of water contamination with fuel leakage and exhaust gases and the concept of the tourist model for the Elbon Canal is just the result of an in-depth analysis of the phenomenon of similar navigable canals in the world. All of them are significant local and social value and require careful approach rather than drastic action to keep their unique character. Incorporation of proven solutions from around the world allows uh, for the statement that the decisions made have a chance to achieve the intended effect. Uh, revive the region, enable it to be known to a wider audience and create a new slow tourism attraction. The nature of the project as a whole uh, the is, as, is the result of a work of a designer that combines uh, knowledge from many different fields and disciplines such as architecture, design, landscape architecture, uh, humanistic geography and tourism. And now thank you for your attention. If you Thank you, Julia, um, and I want to thank uh, every one of you
for every uh, your presentation. Now uh, I want to invite you, invite you uh, for a break, lunch break. Uh, and it's, I think it's the best time to speak about art. So um, let's do this. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Coś tu wyłączyć? 